first session of the physics classroom, my name is Chekou Ferrer. Today, I'm teaching you about physical comedies. To start with this session, I would like to start with the definition of the physical comedies. What are they? What are those quantities that we call them as a physical quantities? Physical quantities are those properties of the objects that can be measured by using a proper tool or instrument and they can be expressed in a numerical value or a numerical value can be used to be expressed and then followed by a proper unit. So we use a proper unit after the numerical value to express our measurement of the, that physical quantity. Now, what are the different categories of the physical quantities? Is there any? Yes, there are two different categories for these actual uh, physical quantities. One of them is base, the other one is drive. The base quantities example is like length, time, mass, and temperature. How about drive quantities? Drive quantities are like volume, density, and speed. They are called as a dry quantities because they are usually dry from the base quantities. More than one base quantities they are combined together to make a dry quantity. Now, the first physical quantities that we want to talk about is mass. What is mass? Mass is amount of the particles that the object carry. And the instruments or the tools that you use to measure the mass of the objects can be balanced or scale and comes into two different types. One of them is analog or manual and the other one can be the digital scale. There are many different units that can be used to measure this quantity. One of them is kilograms, which is the bigger quantity, and the other one is the grams, which is smaller unit for this quantity. Each one kg or kilogram equals to one thousand gram. So if you want to convert kg to g or grams into kilograms, you by using this, you can calculate any kind of the data that they give you. For example, they may ask you to convert two kilograms into grams. You can draw this table first and name the first column of this table as kilogram and label the other column as grams. What we know is that each one kg is equal to 1,000 g or grams. What is asked from you is each two kg is equal to how many grams? This is what we don't know here, so we want to calculate. So this one, two times 1,000 divided by one, the answer should be written on this box. So 2 times 1,000 divided by 1 is equal to 2,000 grams, as you can see here. Now, let's see if we have different states of the matters and we want to find uh, their mass, how the procedure is to find the mass of these different uh, objects. For example, um, we have some solid object and we want to find its mass. So we can directly simply put it on the scale and read 
the mass from the initial screen. So you can, for example, you have a stone, which is a solid object, you put it directly on the scale, and you read its mass on this screen, usually in grams. If a liquid is given to you, for example, like water, how do you find its mass? Now, you cannot pour the water directly on the scale. So what should you do? We can pour the water first into a container, a proper container you can use. For example, if it is in the lab, you can use a beaker or you can use a cup. So what is the procedure? First, you have to choose a proper container, for example, a cup. Then you have to put the cup, which is empty and not been filled yet, put it on the scale and read it best from the screen and call it as an M1. Whatever it is, this is the mass of the empty container, you call it as M1 grams. M1. Then you go and find the mass of the container and the liquid now. You fill the container with that specific amount of the liquid which is given to you that you have to measure. Then fill it, then put both of them together on the scale. Read the second mass. The mass should be usually bigger because this is the mass of the container and it is uh, plus the liquid. Call this measure the mass as M2. Now what you have to do at the next step is to deduct the masses from each other. The second reading from the first reading of the mass, which is the mass of the container and the liquid together should be deducted from, you have to minus the mass of the liquid at the begin after mass of, mass of the cup, sorry. So what you have here, M2 minus M1, is the mass of the liquid alone, which is in grams. If it is in grams, this too, so the unit of this mass that you have gained here, the value should be, uh, the unit that you use for this value should be in grams. If it is in kilogram, it should be in kilograms. For the gas, for the gaseous objects, we have to follow the same procedure. This time we have to find a proper uh, container again. For example, you have some amount of air or gas in a balloon. Then you can first uh, transfer it into a specific container and then measure the empty container, the mass of the empty container. And after it is uh, filled with that uh, gas, then read the second mass of the uh, container plus the gas, then do use the same formula to produce the answer. Now, the next quantity that we want to talk about is volume. We learned about mass, how to measure the mass of the different uh, states of the matters and now here we have volume. What is volume? Volume is the amount of the space that the objects occupy. Is it actually measured by the um, beaker? It can be used uh, by, it can be measured by the measuring cylinder and you can use a uh, pipette or burette and or a more accurate result they will give you. And the unit of these volume quantities can there are many different units, but the ones the ones that you are using now at this lesson and you have to learn is a meter cube, a centimeter cube, and millimeter cube, or also milliliter. How to measure the volume of a liquid? You simply Take a measuring cylinder, and it is graduated here, you can see the marks, and then it is written in milliliter or it is in cm uh, cube. You pour the water in, and it is how the water appears. It is a little bit curved, it's not straight. 
So you have to know that you have to look directly to the uh, to the water, and I mean, the water level should be at your eye level, and you have to read the lower meniscus here. So it means that at this example that I have done for you, the liquid volume would not be 35, it would be 30 milliliter. Now, let's see how we can measure the volume of a gas. So if gas is given to us, and for example, we have a balloon filled with the air, so we want to know how much air is inside. So what you have to do is to prepare these, uh, you know, uh, experiments. So, uh, we can uh, install the apparatus like this. Um, you take a container and fill it with the water, and then you capsize the uh, measuring cylinder, which is filled with the water also completely into the water upside down. So the the measures will start from here. The lower one is 10, and then uh, then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. And my the around here. Then you connect it to uh, to the wall, to the uh, balloon here, and then let the gas to flow into the tube. When the gas goes into the tube and it goes into the measuring cylinder, the bubbles of the air they come here on the surface of the water and the best. So the gas or the air will be at release here, and the water level goes down and it becomes lower and lower. When the more gas is actually accumulated here, so the level of this water falls lower, goes down. So the volume of the gas can be read through the empty space here. So the empty space about the water level, whatever it is, uh, it would be the volume of the gas. So for example here, the volume of the gas would be 20 centimeter cube. Now, if you have a regular solid, a regular solid that doesn't have a defined shape, like a stone, how we can find its volume? You can use this method called as displacement of the water. And how it is, I show my diagram step by step. You have first to take one measuring cylinder again, fill with the specific amount of the liquid, and it can be water, and then whatever the volume is, you have to record it as your first reading of this volume. So the volume of the water we have shown here as the V1, which is here. 40 centimeter cube. After that, you take one string and uh, wrap it around the stone and tie it completely and try to lower your slowly, gradually into the water and in the measuring cylinder so that the water won't be splashed and uh, causing some errors in the, uh, taking the measurements. When you place it down, you will see that the lower it goes, the water rises up. The water level rises. For example here, the second reading of the volume would be 60 centimeter cube. So we have an increase in the volume. From 40, it has become 60. Now, how do you find the volume of this stone? Is by uh, using this formula. The second reading we have here V2 minus volume of the water at the beginning of the experiment. Whatever you gain here would be the volume of the stone. For example here the volume would be 60 minus 40 equals to 20 cm. So the volume of the stone here would be 20. And finally, 
if you want to know the volume of a regular solid, for example, like a cube or a rectangular prism, you just simply take a ruler and meter and measure its side and then put it in the proper formula that, it, that is for that specific shape. If it is a cube, it would be 8 over 3, or it is a rectangular prism, it becomes A times B times C. Okay, let's go and see what happens in the next part of this video.